Hey, Foxy listener, thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so excited about my guest today, mostly because I have been such a huge fan of his for such a long time. And this has been something when I started the podcast over a year ago, he was on my list of top five people that I was like, yeah, if I could actually get this person, that would be nice. So, and it happened. So how can you not, like, I'm just living in glory. So if you haven't had a chance, head over to our YouTube channel to actually watch the interview live because you'll get some great eye candy. I'll tell you that girls. <laughs> and you'll be able to see the permagrin that's going to be on my face because this is just a dream come true. So thank you so much for joining me today, Thomas, on the show. Hello. I'm excited to uh, talk to all the Foxy podcast listeners and I'm happy to be here with the infamous fox herself <laughs> i just love it that's going to be my new name i'm keeping it that's just you made my week like that's all so i wanted to talk to you today because you've really done a lot in the music industry but with social media as well so tell right. us a little bit about your journey because i know some people might see you and you know they think oh this guy's a great overnight su success not realizing you've been doing this you know since you were 14 Right. Yeah, that's very true. There's been a lot of uh, work that's gone into my social media. I don't know if I'd have a career today without me having pushed social media as hard as I did. Uh, fortunately, I picked up on how important it was. And um, when I first made a couple trips to Nashville, when I really wanted to do this, that's what everybody was saying. You got to conquer the social media world. And um Thankfully, I started really going hard on that, and I started building a fan base. And like I was telling you earlier, I talked to a lot of uh, music industry veterans and uh, lots of hit songwriters. I've been blessed to uh, call them my friends in Nashville. But uh, they said, you know, when they moved to town in the late 80s or early 90s, they were writing all these songs, but they they had to wait for their next show to have it heard by anybody. And right. uh, today I can write a song right now. And an hour later, I could just post it and have an audience right there to tell me if they hate it, tell me if they like it. It's a, uh, it's a really cool thing. And then when they tell me if the people tell me they hate it, I just block them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine you get that much. <clears throat> like you have so, like I was, I, before this, I was thinking about, what songs has he done that I just love? And I was like, I love Free, God Why will always mm. be one of my top favorites. Uh, Lucky Ones, Kissing on Bourbon. I love that oh, one. Yeah. That's a good one you to like dance to. One. Cheers Great. to Beers. Yeah. Um, Alone in a Crowd, Thinking About Rain. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, my favorite, I'll Be Your Man, which is, if you have not, listeners, if you have not heard I'll Be Your Man, just Google it. I swear you're going to be, to me, I just visualized beside that you just look country, like you wear a cowboy <laughs> hat and jeans. Oh yeah. You're just the epitome of country of like the boy who loves his mama and goes home on that's Sunday right. dinner. Oh yeah. And I was like, that song to me was like Hallmark movie in my head, right? The cowboy <laughs> that picks you up and takes you on horseback to a picnic yeah. in a field and then serenades you with that song and you're just like, oh, I'm in love. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's funny you said a Hallmark movie. A buddy of mine last Christmas had a song, uh, one or two songs on a uh, Christmas Hallmark movie. I can't remember the actor in it. It was the, I think it was the same guy from Cinderella Story with Hilary Duff. I don't know if oh, you know yeah. that movie. Yeah. But I was so, I was so jealous of him because I was like, oh, I, I Maybe he gets to meet that guy or something. I'm a huge fan of that actor and everything. And he's got a couple songs in that uh, movie. So maybe I will be on a Hallmark movie sometime. I, I'll that. know because I'm avid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's my guilty pleasure. You will, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, I can write the script just around that song. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you're up to. Like, what was your career? What made you decide that this was something that you actually wanted to do? to do was like really get into yeah. music. I, when I was 14, um, I uh, was dating a, a blonde haired blue eyed girl and I was, um, 
well, maybe I was 13. I was 13 or 14, and I was dating her, and she was turning either 13 or 14, whatever it was. Her birthday was coming up. And uh, my friends all knew that I could sing, and I played a little bit, and they all jokingly said, why don't you just write her a song for her birthday? And I said, uh, I don't know. And I was like, wait a second. If I, if I write her a song, I don't have to you know, buy a gift? So they're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll just try to write this song, and uh, who knows what will happen. So I ended up writing a song about her. It was called Big Blue Eyes. I, I, you know, it's funny. You, you ask a lot of songwriters what their first song was, and they're like, oh, I don't remember. They all remember. That's a bunch <laughs> of baloney. But uh, that, that was my first song, and uh, the whole uh, class that, w that was at the party, they gathered around, and they all listened to every word I said when I was singing the song. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. And it's and around that same time, I I heard the song "Man in Black" by Johnny Cash. Yeah. And uh, and it's funny because I remember that happening, me writing that song and then hearing that song for the first time around the same time, and I had just got done with like my first actual performance in front of anybody, and then I heard that song and I was like, I need to write something like that. That thing is moving, you know. And I. I I, to this day, I tell people that the day I heard Man in Black was the day I knew I wanted to be a songwriter for a living because what I felt when I heard that song, I wanted to make everybody else feel when they heard my songs. Right. And yeah. so you, now you write your own um, music as well yeah. as your yes. own lyrics. So where does that come from? Like, are you, is it, do you have like a fairly musical family or are you kind of... <laughs> I don't none nobody in my family at all is talented in any music uh at all. There's they can't play, they can't sing, they're tone deaf. I don't know where I came from, honestly. But uh You just took it all. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah, that's right. They used it up all on me. God <laughs> used it all up on me. He didn't have any left for the rest of them. But um yeah, lyrics and uh, melody are tricky tricky things uh I've, i always consider myself uh a very good lyricist rather than a um mel melodic writer but it takes a good melody to write a good song you know so it's i don't know where a lot of these uh, ideas and melodies come from i i'll say this i pray a lot and i i think i just it's it's a blessing that i'm able to write some of the songs that i write um because i'm nothing special fox <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a small town boy from Ohio, you know. So, uh, I, which I, is the like epitome a, of every country story. <laughs> I guess a boy who true. came from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Fortunately, they're starting to know me in Ohio now. That's uh, that's the good thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, that's. Uh, I love songwriting. It's just, it, there's, I haven't mastered an equation for writing a great song. Some of my favorite writers in Nashville, um, they'll tell you the same thing. You know, it's 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 more about just putting your soul into every song you write, and then, I mean, you're gonna write. I, well, at least I've written tons of terrible songs that you'll never hear on Facebook. <laughs> but you just gotta get those get those out, filter those out, and then maybe the next song you write will be a great one. And that was, I was in the process of writing. 10 or 12 songs the week I wrote uh, God Why. Oh, I love that song. And yeah, that song has opened several doors for my career. And uh, that was just a, uh, an awesome able to write like that. But I think it came from having written so much that week. And I, th I think I got all my bad songs out of me that week. And then the last song I wrote that week was God Why. So. And it's such, I love that song because I always love the songs that are like telling a story. And that yeah. one, that one really does and has such oh, a, yeah. such an amazing message to it. Like, right. and I don't know if this is what you meant it to be, but to me, I just took, I was like, you know, it reminded me to take that moment to remember how you treat people because you just never know. You never know their yeah. situation and their circumstance. And we all just need to show a little bit of kindness. Yeah. So what need was... Was that the meaning that you meant? Oh yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, because oh, yeah. we talked earlier about how um, 
to me, I love music and I love hearing what people feel when they listen to a song because I find people take so many different things and sometimes they'll, you know, an artist will come out and they'll say, well, this is where I was or this is where I was sitting when I wrote this song and right. people take something completely like totally off the wall and they're like, well, that's not what I meant, but yeah, glad that's how it makes you feel. <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah, that's the coolest thing. Songs are uh, open for interpretation. It's, it could mean something completely different than how I wrote. I mean, some, somebody out there might see that song as a completely different message and it's fine. Whatever you take it as, as long as it's resonating with you in some way. And I'm happy that you like uh, story songs because you don't hear story songs as much as you used to. You don't. And I'm, and I miss that. Like, and that's the one thing that I find like country music has always kind of been really good for is that that's where you used to really find them. And there's right. a lot of original, like, I, and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say like, I'm a huge country fan. Like, if somebody were to line up a bunch of pictures, I might be able to tell you who everybody is, yeah. <laughs> but I love music. Like I listen, like when I'm in the car, it's so funny. Cause my son is really, he's um, 12, but he's huge into music. So it'll go from like, well, I'll be your man, which plays in my car every time I get into <laughs> it. Cause I, I'm obsessed with that song. Oh, good. I do not sing super well, but in the car, let me tell you, I could be, I could <laughs> sing that right with you. <laughs> You're a rock star in the car. In the car. And so we'll listen to like, you know, country and then it'll go to like ACDC and then it'll go to like grunge music. And like, it's just, it's so weird. And people are yeah. always like, this is the oddest playlist. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, well, it doo-wop's coming up next. So <laughs> yeah, well, no, you have an infatuation with good music, which yeah. is a great thing. That's, that's awesome. So what, who are some, you know, besides, of course, Johnny Cash, which I, I'm a huge mm. fan of his as well. What are, who are some of the other people that you look up to that have been sort of your mentors along this journey? Um, good friends of mine that I, I sat down with the first time I moved to town <clears throat> were, were uh, Brad and Brett Warren, uh, mm -hmm. the Warren brothers, and they, they're phenomenal songwriters. They've written uh, numerous Tim McGraw hits. They wrote Red Solo Cup <clears throat> for Toby Keith. And um, they've been great. They were, they were great mentors when, when I first moved to town. And they, uh, they really sat me down and just shot me straight and said what I needed to do. And I had just graduated high school. And they basically said, Thomas, if you want to do this, you need to be in this town. It's like uh, my my manager always says, uh, if you want to be Mickey Mouse, you got to go to Disneyland. Yeah. And if you, if you want to be a country singer, I guess you got to go to Nashville. And me moving to Nashville at that young age was the best decision of my life. And I wouldn't have if, if, I, if it wouldn't have been for Brad and Brett Warren, who, um, you know, told me what I needed to do and uh, guided me along that way. And another, and they're great songwriters. And another big mentor for me has been a man named Jeff Bates. He is, uh, he was the uh, CEO of the first label I signed to. And, uh, now he's, uh, he's, um, managing me and helping me and taking me on the road with him. And I've been able to open shows for him. And he's, I've learned a lot from him. He's, he's, he's been a great guy and, uh, some, some bigger artists that I've always, Loved. I mean, I love George Strait. I, th I think it, it, it's his songs. It doesn't get any better than his songs. Dean Dillon, who wrote uh, several of the uh, George Strait hits that you hear. Um, I love Kenny Chesney. His work ethic is uh, something that I really look up to. He, uh, I mean, I've seen several of his shows, and he works his tail off on stage, and he makes sure the person in the front row is just as engaged as the person in the very back row. And, yeah, uh, that's, that's an inspiring thing. So what I get asked a lot, because I do a lot of speaking and stuff, and what I get asked is people are always ask me if I get nervous before I go up on stage. So yeah. what's it like for you before you head out there? I used to get uh, nervous. I remember, I uh, remember the first, I played a little Opry, a little Opry house in, in Lebanon, Ohio, when I, when I first started and my hands would get so cold and clammy and I would shake. I would be so nervous. And it was, it's amazing looking back now because, um, I mean, I get butterflies, but that's more of an excitement yeah. than it is uh, being scared. But the last time I really was very uh, 
shaken up and terrified was when I uh, made my Grand Ole Opry debut in Nashville and I was waiting on the side stage to go on and perform. That was, I was shaking in my boots, Fox. <laughs> oh, I bet. Because that's Mrs. sort Fox, of like. I was shaking. Yeah. Because that's the epitome. Like, I mean, right. you hear it all the time, right? Like people are like, to mm -hmm. play that, so many iconic people stood on that stage. Right. You know, that it's just, where do you go from there, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's true. It's very true. There's, it's, that was the biggest stage that I ever dreamed about playing <clears throat> and I played it and I was uh, 20. I mean, I'm 21 now, but as a 20 year old being able to perform on the Grand Ole Opry stage is another uh, huge blessing. And um, it was uh, nerve wracking. But as soon as I got in that circle where there's a circle on the stage where they don't replace the wood, and that, that's where all of the, all my heroes have played. Once I s stood on that circle, the nerves went away and I just performed. So what, so as a speaker myself, and I, we talked before that I had just gotten over a bad cold. I know yeah. that, that singers are one of the best ones for techniques to really save your voice. And I've got a lot right. of listeners that are, <clears throat> you know, speakers and do all yeah. that kind of stuff. So what are some of the things that you do to help protect your voice? Because of course that's, that's everything to you. Yeah, it's fu it's funny. My my uncle's a, a basketball coach, and he scream. He actually coached me in high school, and he screams all the time. And he actually asked me, well, "Do you have any tips on how to save my vocal cords?" And I, I was I, I tried to help him. He's not he's not much of a learner, Mrs. Fox. So I <laughs> I hope he hears that. Um, but yeah, relaxing your uh, vocal cords is very important when you're talking or I mean when you're singing because when they tighten up that's when they strain and I'm no professional vocalist by any means but I know a thing or two and uh really focusing on filling your uh, diaphragm up and l letting the air come through rather than pushing it is right. a very important thing yeah I always think of every note that I sing as going down rather than up and it takes the stress off my vocal cords. But just relaxing is, is very important because when you get nervous, that's when everything tightens up. And just find your, your comfort zone and, and be just relaxed because not, it's not, nothing bad's gonna happen. You're, it, it gets scary when you're in front of people, but what's the worst that can happen? It, the only thing that can make it worse is if you get stressed out. So just right. think of it that way. And if you relax, then you're gonna come off as more professional. You're gonna. You're not gonna tighten up. Your vocals aren't gonna tighten up, and you'll be able to speak clearer. So, for you, like when you think back over, like where you've come from when you first started, is there one moment that sticks in your mind that you kind of go, you know, besides being on the the Opry stage, is there one moment that you s can think of that you stood there and went, "I can't believe this is happening to me." Yeah, the the Opry was a big one. Um, I've been able to open up for some of my heroes. I've, um, like when I opened for Tracy Lawrence, I think that was a really big, uh, wow. How is this happening? Um, signing to my first, uh, label in Nashville was a really cool thing. Um, I think that was cause I was like, I, I, I was 20 when I played the Opry and signed my first label. So, and there's a lot of people. And they call it a 10 year town before anything like that happens. And I, I had only been there for two years and um, I just thanked God uh, that I was able to do all that at a young age. That was a, those two things are the signing to a label and uh, playing the opera are probably the biggest things. And uh, that's been great signing to that first label I was signed to because I met one of my biggest mentors, Jeff Bates, like I told you. And um, I've been, I was able to get a new record out to my fans, which was awesome. And uh, I've been getting a lot of good feedback on that. God wise on it. He said, uh, yeah. you, like, you like cheers to beer and yeah. uh, kissing on bourbon. It wouldn't be a, uh, a country record without a song like God, why? And then on <laughs> the other end of the spectrum, cheers to beer. That's country <laughs> right there. We were talking to you about, um, I don't know, we've got, we get listeners from all around the world and stuff, but I live in a small town in Alberta, so cowboy country, and oh, yeah. 
uh, we have a town just, uh, we're under 20,000 people, but once a year we have a concert called big Valley Jamboree and it's, it's one of the biggest ones in Canada and it's all weekend and we get big names. Like we've had Reba McIntyre, Brooks and Dunn. There's just, you know so what funny. I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt you. No, but, no, no. Uh, Re Reba, Reba really likes the song God, why? That does not surprise me. Oh, she, uh, her, her older sister called me when I was on vacation, actually. I was in Florida, and I was with my family, and I got a call, and she um, she said, this is Alice McIntyre. I'm Reba McIntyre's sister. And I was like, yeah, and I'm Johnny Cash's uncle. Like, this is <laughs> – there's no way. And uh, But it turned out it was, and, and Alice told me that um, – she that out that she had really liked the song and she sent it to Reba and Reba really liked the song and uh, we tried to set up a um, a time for me and Reba to meet but it ended up she was in my hometown and I had something that I couldn't uh, cancel it had been something I had booked for for a, a couple months in advance and so the stars didn't line up for us to meet and talk about that but uh, it was a really cool thing to hear that Reba was a fan of that song so oh. That would be, yeah, that would be, she's, she's one of my favorites too. I have to say. No, she's I, great. I, I do love her stuff. Cause she's, she's like, we had talked about before. She's like one of those storytellers, right, you know, yeah. like her song fancy and all that kind of other stuff. And, oh, and yeah. I really love that. So one of my goals is to get you to our huge concert that happens here. Yeah. At Big Valley. So I want everybody to send messages and emails and just inundate panhandle. And I will put the link to get Thomas Mack here. And then. Yeah you have to let me come backstage. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, that'll, that'll be my first show there. So, because it'll be, I mean, yeah. Oh, and it's, you know, there's our population of our town doubles on that, that weekend. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. And people, they get their country on the cowboy hats, the boots come out like the oh, yeah. short shorts The you know, <laughs> like people are just, yeah, they, they pull out no stops. There's, there's a lot of beer that happens on that night. Oh, good. <laughs> That's that's it's a uh, good old country time. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for my fan base when they drink beer. <laughs> so when you go, like, what is on the plate for you now? So you've signed a deal. You have a record that's going out. What right. what goals are you, do you have set? Like, what's the next thing is your, like, God, if I could get this accomplished? Dude, I, I naturally always want a song to uh, climb up the charts, the billboard charts. Um one that's constantly getting radio play there. We have some, we have some songs on the new record. Now the record just dropped in June, so it hasn't been that long, but uh, we, we have some songs on that record that we think can be really big hits. And it's just a matter of getting it to people and um, having good promoters that can uh, get the radio stations to play it. And um, cause I've, I've had some cool things happen, but I'm still a, a new artist and not a lot of people know my name. So it's, it's a little bit harder to get radio stations to hop on board unless they listen to the song. So uh, that's, that's one big goal. We're, we're in, um, I'm in a little bit of a transition phase with labels right now. And uh, there's some cool things that are in the works, but I think getting a song to climb the charts would be the coolest next thing, next thing for me. So how, what is your, you know, what does your family think about all of this? Cause of course you said they're kind of not, it's not like they're in that industry. So yeah. what is, you know, how are, oh, how yeah, are they? they just, <clears throat> that's, they're, they're very, very supportive, but at the same time they um, bring me back to earth um, when some cool things happen. Like I came home and uh, I had just uh, played the Grand Ole Opry stage. I came back to my hometown and I said, dad, that was really cool playing the Grand Ole Opry stage. And he said, that's good, son. Cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. That's fine. But I was just cut on grass. Grand Ole Opry. I don't cut grass <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's what I thought, but I guess not. And who's that? You always have your father bringing you back down to earth. But yeah, I thought that was funny. Yeah. My, my, that's my mom for me. Like, she'll yeah. be the one that's backstage hooting and hollering and everything but she's also the one that's like hey you did this and you did this and this needs to that's fix great it. don't forget where you came from you know yeah and, it, and she she always says it only takes you one word to just you know fall right back down to be a cashier sitting at walmart sweetheart so you just be grateful every day for what you have and that's you know, fantastic like, that you have that <clears throat> Okay, mom. Like she's always the one that's like, remember where you came from, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. 
That's awesome. That's it makes it a, yeah. Remember where you came from because it'll make it really hard if you have to go back there and you don't remember. Yeah, there's there's nothing there's nothing like playing the Grand Ole Opry stage and signing a deal and then everybody in your hometown or all your fans are driving by and seeing me cut the grass. Is that Thomas Mack cutting the grass? I think it is. <laughs> Trying to like wear a ball cap like this, but I'm up somebody else. <laughs> Just common folk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just common, common folk. folk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. So besides, obviously, writing music and stuff, what other stuff do you like to do? I know you love to fish. Mm-hmm. I really, really love to fish. Um, that's my, my, my favorite thing to do is be on stage and perform. My second favorite thing to do is, is write songs. My third favorite thing to do is fish. I really, really enjoy fishing, and I write a lot of songs about fishing. And... Um, it's it's blessed me. I guess I can give a plug to this fishing brand, Lucky Fishing. Like I've been able to uh, chat with a lot of cool fishing brands and meet a lot of cool fishermen because uh, they're fans of my music. And uh, I've even reached out to some of the uh, pro bass fishermen on the circuit of the Bassmaster Classic, and I've been able to chat it up with some of them. And they told me they like some of my songs, and it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I, I love fishing. That That's my answer, Fox. I love fishing. <laughs> love fishing. <laughs> yeah. So I would be remiss if the girls, you know, who are listening and have heard the song, tell me your, why you wrote I'll Be Your Man. Or was it for somebody? Oh, yeah. I got to go back on that one. That song was on my first record. Um, I'll Be Your Man. Oh, goodness gracious, Fox, you're putting me on the spot, and I can't remember what that song was about. I really got to think about it. Oh, you oh. were saying no matter what, you will be, like, it was just, oh, that's what I was saying. It was like a Hallmark oh, yeah. movie, you know? Yes, yes, I'll be yes. your I, light, I rem- I'll be your right. outlaw, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be whatever you need me to be. Like, I remember oh. now why, why I wrote it. I was, um, I was in high school, and I, I had a, a high school girlfriend at the time, and um, – I think we watched an old, an old uh, Western because I, I always liked watching those. She didn't. And uh, that's why it didn't work out. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we, I think he said it was something about an outlaw. And he said, I'll, I'll, I'll be your outlaw or something. And that really, I was like, oh, that's awesome. And so I tried to actually write the song before my girlfriend at the time. And um, it, it turned into a, uh, an anthem of how I think guys should treat their uh, women, be anything that they want them to be. If, if you really love them as much as you uh, claim. And it's, that was a, that song was a cool thing because um, I got to play that song for my brother and his wife now for their wedding. That was their wedding oh. song they picked. And that was a really cool thing. That's always been one of their favorite songs too. It is. I play it all the time. And, uh, and then I always just kind of look over at my husband and he's like, yeah, I know. That's who I should be. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. I, Stop I, playing I, the song. And I'm like, no, I it. love it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the, I wrote the chorus first and the, I had written verses. The song sounded completely different. And it, when I first wrote it and the, my girlfriend at the time, I thought it was a really good song. And my girlfriend at the time said that I don't like that song at all. She was very frank. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what I can do with it. So I put it on the shelf and I just kind of let it sit for a while. And then I finally came back to it and rewrote it the way that you hear it on the record. And I'm happy that call it the one good thing that came out of the relationship. I got to rewrite that song. <laughs> you got to write that song. Yeah. So don't worry. She'll regret it. Cause it's, I'm sure it's going to be one of those songs, but that's the one that's going to end up on the Hallmark movie. She's going to listen. Oh, to it. Yeah. She's going to be like, man because <laughs> i think that's every girl's dream let's be honest every girl's dream yeah. is that she's going to be able to hear something and be like he wrote that song for me that that that's song's true. about me and that that's you hope point. it's a yeah. good song like that not like one <laughs> I, called kicked you to the curb like <laughs> <laughs> yeah where you're like that song i got a cu- i got a couple of those under my belt by the way so uh, some <laughs> of these girls will be uh, waking up to the past to the past so now dating single, everybody always wants to know that. What's your I am, status? I am single right now and, uh, and pretty happy with it. Yeah. Cause and, that must yeah. be hard in your industry. Yeah, it is. It is. It's um, right now where I'm at, I couldn't imagine putting a uh, woman through 
me being on the road as much as I am. There's a lot of artists that can do it and uh, more power to them and God bless them. But for me, I, it's just not something that I'm looking for at the moment, but I'm yeah. one of these days for sure. It, once I have a, um, a uh, more developed career and I can come back home more often, but like every right now, I, every weekend I'm, I'm in some different state. So it's, it's a, uh, and uh, we got, there's about 50 states in the U S and I have 45 girlfriends in all different states. So I'm working. <laughs> no, that's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke, Fox. Do I'm it. Kidding. Why not? I'm kidding. <laughs> I, only have th- I only have 35. I think you're, I mean, come on, you're 21. Enjoy it. Like, enjoy, like, that's true. Why would you not enjoy the women swooning at you? And- yeah. Why not? Because you've got that say. look. Enjoy it now. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. For, oh, these, these Foxy podcast listeners are eating this up right now. All the girls are going, oh. Well, I showed it to a few of my friends and they were like, oh, he's cute. And I'm like, oh. right, country boy. Like, well, all right. What every girl wants is that country boy that looks good in a cowboy hat and tight jeans. Like, you're like... Give me tight jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> That's <laughs> all it. That's it. all they need, huh? <laughs> I need to change so, my outfit. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to link to everywhere people can find you, but what's coming up for you next? Like, where can people see you live? Gosh, I should know my calendar better. Uh, I do, actually. This weekend, I will be in Kentucky at the Renfro Valley Entertainment Place. That's not right. <laughs> Renfro Valley, I know, in Kentucky, in, in Mount Vernon, Kentucky. I'll be playing on Friday with, uh, I'll be a special guest to Jeff Bates. And then on Saturday, I will be in Adelphi, Ohio, probably butchering that, at a place called Alibi's Bar. And I'll also be with Jeff on the road as a special guest. So I'll be at those places. And um, there's some other cool things coming up that I uh, haven't had confirmed yet that I wish I could talk about, but I can't, but that's, that's okay. where you can see me this weekend. We'll make sure that we, we follow you and stuff like that and try to make Certainly. Canada one of your, one of your stops. I, well, you, you can help me make that happen. Yes. I'm going to try my best to make sure that they get you for the, you know, for the next big Valley and we'll have you down here and get everybody to, to know and love you here in Canada. So yeah. you do have quite a following from Canada though. Cause a lot of people that listen I've, to me are like, I know who you're yeah. talking about. I was like, I've, all right. I've noticed that. I've actually noticed that um, there's a girl, there's a girl in Nashville that um, is from Canada. That's an a, aspiring artist. Her name's Amanda Jordan. And oh, since yes. we're talking about, are you familiar with Amanda Jordan? I am. Yes. She's a sweetheart. She's a, she's very talented too. And uh, she's another one of those Canadians that are uh, uh, a fan of my music. So I just on, on topic, Miss Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that like, you know, we were talking about at the beginning that that's where, you know, do you find that that's where social media has really been able to help you to reach farther than what you ever thought you would? Cause now people oh, yeah. all over the world can tune in and listen to you. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, I can, I can track when somebody's in Germany listening to my music and they will message me and they're like, you, your fans in Germany love you. I'm like, I'd never imagine I'd develop a fan base in Germany without leaving uh, the state of Tennessee. You know, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It is becoming a artist, a successful artist in the industry has, it is right now the easiest it's ever been. And at the same time, it's the hardest it's ever been because there's a platform to reach so many people but there's several people now that are also trying to do exactly what you're doing. Right. So it's, it's, there's opportunities, but it's, it's getting very flooded and, um, but it, it shouldn't deter you from, from using these platforms because if you do it the right way, there's a giant fan base for whatever it is you have to offer. And, uh, social media it has to be used today. It's just, you can't really run. I mean, I'm a small business myself. I'm the Thomas Mac LLC and, any any small business you can't get away from using social media today yeah and i think that's what a lot of people don't you know we don't see that because we just listen to the song and we go to the concerts and stuff we don't realize that there's a lot of background work that happens and a lot of yeah you know a lot of stuff that you know that you have to do that takes place to make everything run smoothly so you can just look like an overnight success kind of thing true yeah we try to give that illusion but um 
I have no problem letting people know that I've, I mean, I've worked several years uh, building a fan base through playing shows, uh, playing live shows and building up my um, social network platform. That's awesome. I can't wait to follow more of your career. I can't wait to get you here to to my hometown to be playing on a huge stage. I've no idea who's coming next, but I, I am can't so wait excited. either. I'm excited too. Let's I will I will pull my cowboy hat sitting right over there in the corner. Anybody who's watching <laughs> on YouTube, I will pull it out. It doesn't get pulled out very often. All right. But I will pull, pull it out, out pull out my boots, and I will be I'll be the one in the audience who's singing every single word because it plays I'm such a huge fan will always remain such a huge fan and i'm Fantastic. just honored that you were able to take time today to, to no, talk to I'm us a, i'm honored to be talking to the fox <laughs> and that's it that sticks that's gonna be it, it like that's, stick. that's my... i think that's awesome i think that's <laughs> the coolest thing <laughs> one of these days that's what i'm gonna if i ever hear that in an audience when i'm speaking somewhere i'll know <laughs> i'll know that you started it it was that's right yeah copyrighted by thomas mask <laughs> <laughs> yeah i better get yeah <laughs> i better so, get a little i better get a little cash for that done in your name absolutely on my first million <laughs> want to see that cash fox <laughs> i'm willing to share <laughs> <laughs> so um and you're still going to be putting stuff out like you have a youtube channel which i follow we'll tag to that and you're still going to be putting your new songs out on that like will people still be able to hear some yeah i will be in fact i was just at a meeting with my uh, manager and with with how busy i have been um playing shows I've, i'm playing shows a lot more than i was when i was um really doing the social media thing uh, hard but uh I, i'm going to start um getting back and, and doing uh, my social media the way I was. And uh, I'll be putting new songs out more frequently for sure. Um, and in fact, I, I might post one today. So you can keep, uh, you can, you can be my, one of the first persons to see it maybe. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly be posting new songs more frequently now. I'm I'm pretty good at stalking you pretty closely. So good. I usually see stuff. When You're the one. Out. You're the one has been stalking my page. I was wondering who it was. It's see, it's one of the other joys of social media is that it's a lot yeah. easier to kind of stalk people <laughs> without them really know. But it's a good yeah. stalk. It comes it comes could, from a good place. Not a not that. a creepy kidnap you. Yeah. Yeah, you. I'm the, too old for that now. <laughs> that's 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 one of the joys being able to stalk people a little bit easier. That's great. <laughs> fangirl top of the moon perma smile on my face that was so amazing and it was such a privilege for me to be able to talk to thomas to get to know him a little bit better because of course it's true i have been stalking him on social media and you can too so here's what i want y'all to do i want y'all to grab your cowboy hat whatever makes you feel country I want you to head over to YouTube. We are gonna tag you on the videos. I want you to tip your hat and sit down and listen to Thomas Mack because you are not gonna regret it. This guy has so much talent and you'll be able to find all of my favorite songs. I'm gonna post them, I'm gonna tag them in them because I just love it. And ladies, I want you to head out and I want you to listen to I'll Be Your Man and you will know you will know in your heart of hearts the reason why I love that song so much because it truly is exactly what you want your man to be. So I tip my hat to Thomas. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Make him feel a little bit country because every girl needs to feel a little bit country now and then. And get out there and don't forget to send those letters to Panhandle because we need to band together as Fox listeners, as the foxiest people in Canada and get Thomas here in concert. And I can't wait to be sitting in the audience with all of you guys listening to him with his first debut in Canada. I'm so, so excited for that moment. So we're all gonna make that dream come true for everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all. I love all of your support. And I want you to take away not only all of the amazing stuff that Thomas had to say, but just remember that whatever you dream, whatever your goals are, no matter how big or small, whether that's to become the next huge recording artist, whether that's to stand on that stage at the Grand Ole Opera and sing your little heart out, whether that's to start the business that you've always wanted to do, to get up on a stage and talk and motivate a bunch of people, 
whatever that dream looks like to you, marriage, kids, whatever it is, go after it. Go after it. Know that there's going to be work to get to that point, but do everything that you can. Give it all. Be true to yourself. Be true to your heart and who you are, and the universe will provide. Love you all. Remember to have fun, because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Yeah.